Cool. Hi, guys. I have uh, my friend, my brother, Nigeria's flyest, finest. I call him, uh, you know, a lot of people say star boy. I don't use that word star boy that much. Maybe I'm too old. I don't know, but I don't use the word star boy. But I mean, John Adele Gallo would rank as one of the most unique person in Nigeria, not just in sports, but across all people. And one of the easiest to relate with, one of the easiest to communicate with. But at the same time, in my 15 years in this job, the only person that I know, the only footballer that I know, and I say this without disrespect or disregard to anybody, that keeps to time. I remember one time I invited him to the studio in Brilla, and I said 10 o'clock. 9.45, Judah Degalo was in the studio. We were not ready, and I was ashamed of myself. Uh, Judah Degalo, you're welcome to Elegoted TV. My chat. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm fine. Thank God we're surviving. Let me take one question out of the way. Ojo, do you ever get angry? I'm human, of course. I'm human being. I got I get angry sometimes, but I, uh, I don't let my I don't I don't let it last too long because when you get the reason angry why I'm much. asking this question, you'll be wondering why I'm asking this question. The reason why I'm asking this question is uh in the last okay, since the transfer saga, it wasn't a saga anyway, since the transfer before the transfer and then it happened. I mean a couple of well um WhatsApp group, and then you know, people chat with me here and there. And I, your friend, do you have any history of him having a bust up with somebody in the field, whether for national team or for club side? And I was like, I've not talked about it, but I've not really seen it. I've seen Tredini, I've seen Roy Kane, Cantona, Terry Henry, Vieira, I've seen all of that, but I'm not, don't you get provoked on the field of view? Yeah, I get provoked, you know, but. I try to control my my emotions, you know, because sometimes when you play in a game, the emotions is high, you know. If you take that emotion into confrontation, it's gonna cause you red card or game bounce, you know. Of course, I get angry in the game, but I, I try to show it a bit, but not always, you know. So, because even when you get angry, sometimes it destabilize your game, you know. You don't concentrate anymore. You get angry, then you focus on what is getting you mad and then you don't focus on what you want to achieve in the game. You know? So sometimes you just let it go and just concentrate on the game. Okay. Uh, well, why I'm saying this is because uh, a couple of days ago, Tradini talked about the fact that you didn't pass the ball to him. He was mad. He didn't get on the plane. And so somebody said, if reverse was the case, would Odeo be angry? And I said to myself that, I'm not Odeo for a while. Though. I've not really seen him angry. I'm not really, you know, you know when you, you don't remember something until people raise it up. I was like, I've not really seen it happen. But then, talk to us, what happened? Because to me, I thought Troidini was the best guy you play with all through your career. Yeah, he was the best guy, you know. Uh, Troidini was just saying what happened in that game, you understand. I'm a man you found, which everybody know right from when I was young, little till date, you know. So, my first game against Man United in Old Trafford, I was a bit tense and I was a bit hype, you know. I want to do well in that game. I want to score against a team I've been supporting from young, you know. So that game was like, I did everything I could score. I could not, you know. So there's one chance, I think, one or two I had. God knows, I was supposed to pass that ball. But I tried to shoot and see if I can score. But I missed that chance, you know. So he was not happy about that, you know. But we didn't really talk about that, you know, till the next day. Then the coach called us and said, that, what happened? Because we lost the game finally because uh, Pamata scored free kick and Man United won World for 1 0. So we're not really happy. So the next day, the coach now called both of us, Kikeda, and said, that, what happened and all that. We had a bit of argument and all that. So we now shake each other and say, no, we don't have problem. You know, Troy Jenny is, is a good guy, he's one of the nicest guys I've played with. It, he said it how it is, you know, it's not a guy that beats around the bush and all that. If he's not happy, he say what he feels and all that, you know. So I know that game was not happy. I know I was supposed to pass in that game, but, you know, that emotion was high and all that. Because I know he too, anytime we play against Aston Villa, he want to score because he he's a it. team. He can die to score. So it's just the same thing like me, you know, when I want to score against Man United then, you know. But, you know, 
He's a good guy. He's a good guy. That day he was not happy, and but we talked about it, and that was how it ended. The next day we continued training and playing as normal. I never had problem with nobody, no Troy Dini. We never insulted each other, or confronted each other about that. He was not happy about that game, and I can say that that he was not happy. But the next day we talk about it and all that. Then that's it. And 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 you know, lately. I look at you and I'm like, okay, this transfer played for Watford. Manchester United actually wanted to sign you before. I'm aware we had that conversation before. Uh, yeah. Nathan Ibrahimovic was there when Rooney was there. And I remember what you said to me. You said, and I said to you, or oh, don't go to my United. And you said, bros, I mean, they play the ball. Do you think, well, you know, because you didn't answer the question. You just said, I said, oh, why are you not going to Manchester United? Why do you want to go, go to China? And you was like, bros. Do you think if I go to my United as Latin Ibrahimovic is there, they will put him on the bench and start me, even if I am younger and I'm better? And I didn't have a word to say. But you see, a couple of days before, you tweeted and you said, favor over labor. And Nigerian Twitter people were dragging you. That day, that day that you made that tweet, were you already aware that Manchester United were going to come sign you? Were you speaking? No, 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 no. I made that tweet in January now. Yeah? I made that tweet in December or January. No, in December. When December. 6th of December 6th. Okay. In December 6th, I didn't know anything about that, no, because this season just finished in uh, China. In China. So I didn't know anything about Man United, you understand? So. You know, I believe in God so much. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe everything I have achieved today. You can't take away hard work, but it's God because I'm not the hard, hardest worker in life. True. So some people did not understand what I mean about favor is better than labor. You know, Twitter Street is crazy. They just jump in on everything. They just want to talk about that. You know? That's what I'm Sometimes I don't, I, I don't have strength for Twitter people. I'll just leave, you know. So I said, favor is better than labor. No, some people didn't understand that. They just jump into a conclusion. You know? I was born in a Jegula in the ghetto. I, when I was young, I played with many, many great players, hard-working players that don't have the opportunity to even be half of where I've been in my life. So today, do you think it's only my hard work that took me here? It's the favor of God, man. I'm a favored child. I don't care what anybody says. I'm a favored child. You understand? So when they say all that and all that, I said, okay. And I tweet again. I said, okay, labor is better than favor. So everybody to choose whatever I want. Whatever I suits you. I, I, because I, I don't have strength for Twitter people. I, don't, I can't shout. Whatever you, suits you. When you tweeted it, you, I actually did see it. Somebody now tweeted and tagged me. Uh, come and see yeah. what, what you saw the tweet now. Come and see what your friend to think that you you always praise him. Come and see what he said. So I went back and okay. I, like over a hundred tweets has happened before then. I went, I, I read all of them. So I and I joined the conversation. I said, but this thing is simple now. Labor is better than labor. So I was saying, I was saying that as I am here, I want to travel to Las Vegas with my family on holiday. Mm. I want to work hard and take my family to Las Vegas or Disneyland. And then somebody that mm. called me and said, ah, Edafi, I want to pay all expense trip for you and your family to Disney versus mm. I want to work hard and use my money to buy it's two different things. I said, which one would you choose first? And everybody was it's, like, it's terrible. It's a so, now. Nah. Some people don't understand it. It is when I signed to Man United now, some people started understanding when I mean favor over labor. Do you think I'm the hardest worker? Do you think in my age, I will leave a China in midst of coronavirus and sign for Man United? It no. It doesn't make sense. It's no, not my hard work. It's favor of God, man. It's favor. So I when you say favor over labor, some people don't understand. They just jump to the conclusion and say, I don't say you should not work. You have to work hard. You work hard, but if you work hard, work hard, work hard, the favor is not there, it's zero, it's nothing. Absolutely. So, so, let's, let's, come to, so 
I will choose favor over labor ten times. But me and you are on the same boat on this one. Oh. Ah, my so, worry go say, worry go say, picking where God carry for back. He need the kickstone. Oh. <laughs> John, he need the tire ram. After he need the trek, he need the brake sweat. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's stretch this in. Let's stretch this in a bit. I know you don't have time, and I also don't have time. I'm I'm a sit at home father today. I'm working from home. I'm the babysitter and everything. I need to so cry. Uh, uh, when you left China for United, they had already gone for hot weather training. You didn't miss up with the team. You didn't get to train with the team. And then you were preparing. You went to one school to go and train. And the girls, they refused to allow you to train. What, give us the backstory. What happened there? No, when I came, when I went to UK and all that, you know, the team already went to Marbella to train and all that. The training ground is locked. Everywhere is locked. All the workers there they travel to Marbella to train, you know. So I got a personal trainer which I've always been using before with my agent there in Manchester, you know. So we're doing some training in the gym, doing some work. So there's sometimes in the evening, I want to do some more work and all that, you know. But that place was locked. They did not open, but I have to go back home, you know. But I did my training normal and all that because I know I have to push myself to get to the level. The last time I played in Premier League was early January 2017. Then I'm back 2020 in January. So I have to push myself, you know, to get to that level. Before they come back from Marbella, from the training camp, at least I should be 60 to 70 percent, you understand? Physically fit, though I still need a couple of runs, that sharpness and all that, which I'm still going to work on. That's why I took that upon myself. I was training my personal. I did that myself, you know. I did that myself. I took no, so, my personal turn so to do there that are, because there are there are there are three major things that I want to ask you before I go to the questions that the fans have, and let's take it quick. Uh, one of them is there's this argument, and I was trying to explain to some people that when you sign a contract with a, a club, a professional football club, there are certain things that are called does and don't things you must not do. Things like Odio Egalo, you cannot go and do bungee jumping, you cannot do skydiving. You cannot ride a motorbike. So I need you to confirm to me whether it is true or not. Are these things inserted in your contract? Or can you ride a power bike right now? Like, I just buy a power bike. I want to ride a power bike. Is it allowed for a professional player? Uh, if, you are, if you have license, some people can do that. But in some contracts, it's not, it's not allowed because it's risky to your health. It's risky to your life. If a club is paying big money to sign you and all that, they're going to put that in your contract. You understand? But me, I'm on loan, you understand? So I know the, they give you, even as a sign of rules and regulations, things I have to do. Lost your audio. I've lost your audio. Hello? Okay, I can hear you now. I wasn't hearing you before. Okay, things you must do, things you must not do, things you, so, Every club have their own way of doing that thing. So, but like for me, I can't do all those things because it's dangerous to human health, it's dangerous to human life, you know. And this is not my profession, you know. My profession is football. So all those things are dangerous to my own profession. So you don't have to do it. All right, now let's sit, sit, sit discussing this contract thing. Yeah? Uh, it, a story came out that Shangash, I know I want you for two years. With a bumper increase in your contract, five hundred. Some people say five hundred thousand pounds. Some people say four hundred thousand pounds. Well, we're oscillating between those numbers, and then everybody is asking me that question. You've seen the question I answered on Instagram, I'm sure, and a lot of people still keep asking me. But when I when I told people yesterday that I'm going to have an interview with you, everybody said asking that question. So I'm asking you, Odion, as Manchester United, first of as Manchester United put an offer on the table for you and say after the loan. We want you to be here. Don't even tell me the amount, but we want you to continue with us. Have they put an offer on the table? There's no, there's no offer because the season is still on. I've not finished my loan day. You know that. Okay. So if the season ends and Manchester United puts an offer on the table, let me just put a number: two hundred thousand pounds a week. Okay. Or they were giving you two hundred thousand pounds. Stay in Manchester United for another one year or two years. And Shanga Shano, I call you and say, Odio, it's 500,000 pounds. So are you all right? My friend, come back to China. What's your choice? 
well, I don't just take decisions alone in my life, you know. I have a principle, I have a guideline for everything I do. I, I always pray to God to direct me and all that. I've seen so many tweets about this. I've seen so many people going crazy, go back to China, some say stay in Man United and all that. Have you seen me say the word? No. I've not said a word because actually told me that you're not gonna say a word. I told you that I'm not I don't have anything to say. When the season finished and I get offers from the two team, then I will sit down and think about it, pray about it, and whatever God says I should do, I will go with that, you know. I don't just sit down and just take decision and, and I don't just get carried away with whatever people say and whatever is on ground. I came to Manchester United to play for pay cut because I wanted to. Yeah. So anything I said happened, you know. But like I said, I want the season to finish, my loan deal finish, then I will see everything I have on ground. It's not only Shanghai that will put offer on ground, you understand? True. My United will come with the offer. Another team too might come with the offer. You, you never can tell, you know. So you don't just rush and do things and say, ah, I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there. No, I have to sit down and finish the season well, sit down with my agent, see what's on ground. Okay, A, B, C, D, A, F is on ground. Okay, we have to pick. Then I'll go back to my drawing board. I talk, pray to God and God will direct me what to do. Then that's it. Fantastic. So let me go to the, the fans now, the, a lot of them. Morganet Karu. Onovuhi said, I should tell you this. Please, Elegbete, help me thank Jude Ojo Igalu. I was one of those people who won this giveaway. It's not actually giveaway for me. It's a lifesaver. We are not eating like two days because of this lockdown. I live, uh, I live in Ikpaja. I live in Ikpaja. When the money came, I went to go and show the alert to my mom. And we were all happy. My mom was crying. Tell Odion, I said, thank you. I really don't have any question for him. I can only pray that God will continue to bless him and protect him. So, Amen. Odion, thank you very much on behalf of that one. And me too. I'm thanking you on behalf of many people because I've seen what you've done. And I, I, I really don't, I told you, I don't do giveaway. But this is the first time I'm, I did giveaway because I really see people hungry. I saw how it was and I've been there before. I, I told you the story of yeah. when I was young, I used to carry plates to go and beg food. And then they gave me our food to go and eat. But we didn't have food, we ate it. We don't put salt, one meat, and we ate it. So I know how bad that is, too. Uh, this is coming from Timothy Dembo. How often do you talk to and advise Super Eagles current forward, the likes of Osine, Chukwezi, and the rest, as you are no longer part of the team? And then, two, describe your experience working with Genetrol. Was he the strict type or, or the strict type of coach in training? That's from Timothy Dembo. Well, uh, I talk to the guys once in a while. I talk to Tukweze sometimes. I talk to Osime. Osime is a very nice boy, young, and he's a good guy. I talk to him. We talk almost, not almost every day, but almost every time, you know, I advise him. He's the future of Nigerian football. He's the future. He's going to do so well in football. I always advise him, keep calm, keep working hard, and this guy is going to be his limit, you know. And yes. I've worked with Genetra. I saw the video, before you go to the Genetra, I saw the video where you were transferring and anointing to him. You gave him your jersey. Oh, yeah, you didn't give me jersey, but it was the first person you gave your jersey. I saw it too. I saw it. Yeah, I'll bring, when I come to Nigeria, I'll bring jersey for you. Nice one, so, nice one. Yeah, he came to watch our game against Club Bruges in um, Belgium where we play because it's closer to where he lives yeah. in Lille. So he was there, he messaged me he's going to come and all that. So, I gave him the jersey. And he, in fact, he brought his own jersey for me too. Well, Simon's a nice boy, and we are from very the same nice. place. From very, very nice. I love him. He's down to earth. He's hardworking. He has the future. So, and he has the mentality of a winner. That's what I love about him. Mentality of a winner. He has that lion heart. So I love him. I just want him to keep working out the way he's doing. He's going to break so many records, even in, in Europe, in Nigeria, you know. And coming to get a draw, get a draw is like a father, not to me alone, to everybody that work with him. He's a nice guy. You know, you would say he's not the best in Africa or not the best, but you know, when a coach brings stability to a team, bring calmness, bring unity to the team, you want to work for him. And 
not only that, for me personally, Genetron made me came back to the national team after the World Cup saga and all that. He personally brought me back to because after the World Cup, I said, no, I'm not coming back again. So it's like a father figure to me, gave me the confidence back again to do well. And I went on to win the ISO scorer for the qualifiers to the AFCON. Went to the AFCON to win the ISO scorer again, then come back with bronze and all that. Without him or God in my life, that would not be achieved, you understand? So people say it's hot fashion and all that. As long as it's getting results, who cares? You understand? He's building a team. And at the same time, getting results. You understand? Yeah. Nigeria just wants you to win games every day. But sometimes you're going to lose some to learn from your mistake to work even more harder. Yeah. So for me, it's doing well. It's doing well. It's doing well there. All right. Tunji, I have this question to ask. He said, who's the best Man United teammate you enjoy playing with right now? All my teammates are the best. All right. of them. We're doing well. I know, you're, everyone. I know you will give me a political answer here, yeah, but somebody already, <laughs> said, somebody already said that it is Mata and Bruno Fernandes. Talk to us about yeah. Fernandes. Because they, they, are, they, are good, they, are, they are good passer of the ball. Mata is a good guy, he passes the ball, he's a good passer. Bruno Fernandes has vision and all that. Of course, as a striker, you want to mention midfielder because they give you good balls to score. Yeah. They give you balls to score. Okay, let's go to Alani Adefumiloye. He said, who do you think is the best striker in the EPL apart from United teammates? Who is the toughest EPL defender you have played against? Will you, will you be holding... No, let me... Let me let, okay, will you be holding Ask Igalo section on Twitter anytime soon? Well, for me, uh, the best player in Premier League, I could say for now... For me, I've always think, apart from my United player, like you said, I've always think it's uh, Sergio Aguero because that one is a goal scorer. It's a guaranteed goal scorer, even though it's not doing the way he used to do before. But for me, Aguero is one of the best players, if not the best in the Premier League. You have Mohamed Salah there, you have uh, uh, Mani there doing well too, and all that, you know. You have the like of Abame Young too. So they have a lot of good players in the Premier League, you know. So. I can't really pick one, but for me, I've always chose Aguero. So, who's the toughest defender you played against in the Premier League? Uh, and in general, even outside the Premier League. So, pick from the Premier League and then outside the Premier League. I've played against tough defenders in my life, in my career. I've played against Sergio Ramos. I've played against Pepe. I've played against Matirazzi. I've played against Godin. I've played against Puyol. I've played against... Shelly, I played against Zuma. I played very tough, tough defender in my life, you know. So it's difficult to pick one. Even uh, PK, I played against PK. I've played against lots, lots of defenders I've played against me. Okay, so you don't have one to pick, right? Uh, uh, let me say this. Somebody asked me a question and I answered on your behalf, but correct me if I'm wrong. He said, which game is your best game in the EPL. And I said that game against Liverpool, that you took Skettle and uh, Love Brand, you give them the English shop. Now, I don't know if I'm yeah. right, but am I right? Yeah, yeah, you are, you are, you are right. You are the one who beat Liverpool 3-0 uh, at home. Yes. At Vicarage Road. Yeah. At Vicarage Road. I scored two goals. Yeah. yeah, two goals I scored in that game, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I was right about that. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I said, what's your favorite jersey number? We know that you wear 25 at Man United, but what's your favorite jersey number? You were wearing 24 at World Cup. What's your favorite jersey number right now? Number nine. You number know, nine. like a, a striker, you know. People okay. know striker with nine. So, but sometimes you don't get the opportunity to put on nine, then I choose other numbers, you know. But for me, I would, uh, favorite number would be nine. Because as a striker, who's, people see who's your, who's your favorite Super Eagles player that you love playing with? Like you always want to play with? Uh, favorite Super Eagles player that I want to play with or I've played with. And that you've played with, but you would love to anytime you've loved if you like if you see him in the game that you're in the zone. Like if I were? If you see him in the game, like the way you were with Tridini in Watford, we know he's a favorite, like he's your body. <laughs> Who's your body in the Super Eagles when you were playing in the Super Eagles? I don't really have, I don't really have body, you know. Like I said, I, I gel with everybody. 
they are my guys and all that, you know. But if I inside the field of play, I like to play with a good passer of the ball that can give me pass to score goals. So when you said you I played like of uh, Alex Wobi behind me, I know I'm gonna get a couple of pass if I make good runs. Play with Mikel behind me, I know I'm gonna get a couple of pass if I make good runs. So I will choose that. In DD2, it's a good player. When you have Indeed in your midfield, it's a tight guy, fight, works hard. People like Onazi and all that, you know. So we have loads of players that when they are behind you, you have confidence that ah, today we're gonna die here, <laughs> you know. Okay, I answered that day by your said, what's your favorite food? What do you love doing off the pitch? Who's the best coach you've ever worked with? I like this guy's question. Your favorite food, what do you do off the pitch? And who's your favorite food? My, my favorite food, I love jollof rice and plantain and assorted. Okay. I miss Nigeria anyway. Then my what I do of the feed, I love sleeping. I like watching movies. I love sleeping. I like resting, you know. After training in the morning, I go home, I eat lunch, I can sleep for Africa. I sleep a lot. You know, like now, the way I'm sleeping now, if you see me, you think I'm pregnant, you know. I just woke up now to start doing this interview now. After my morning workout, I ate my breakfast, I slept. I just woke up now to do this interview. Then after this, now I'm going to eat lunch again. I'm going to sleep again or watch movie. Then, so I love sleeping and I and I love relaxing, watching movie. I'm kind of indoor person. I don't go out that much, you know? so I spend most of my time indoor, watching movie or sleeping or relaxing or talking on the phone. You know, we do, we do have a lot in common. Uh, I want to ask you this. This is not part of the questions that he asked. I see questions there. I want to ask you this. I've noticed that you practically answer to every message I sent to you. Like if it's delayed, you say, I was living with my phone, I was resting, I was training. And I've also heard many other people say that, oh, don't always answer, whether it's on Twitter. And I'm thinking, because I'm using myself to measure you now, my inbox is always full. You know that this period, this lockdown period, I actually counted people asking me for money, 3,114 as of this afternoon. So, how do you manage to respond to everything? Is there somebody managing your, your phone for you or is you that does all that? I have PR, but I, I, I manage my, my social media, I manage my phone myself, you know. It's not easy, you understand, but I just have to pick the ones I know is relevant and all that. A day I get up to five to 10,000 messages, you know. It's too much. And you can only do the one you can do. I've done give away on Twitter, I've done give away on Instagram, how many times. I bought food stuff and all that. My boys in Lagos with my mom, they did it and share it along at jazz side and all that food stuff. And I thought I did hand sanitizer to, to share and all that. You know, I've done my bit and I'm still doing, you know, one or two things to help because I know it's a difficult time for people. You know, I just try, but you know, you cannot satisfy, you cannot please everybody. Even though you share 10 billion today, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. You understand? So you just have to do the best you can, you know. So I try to respond to the ones I can respond. And I know there's a lot of message that I don't respond. Some people say, ah, maybe he's feeling pride or he's feeling ego. But sometimes you don't see the message because it's too much. You can't scroll down 5,000 messages and go and start from beginning, you know? No, I just try to pick the one I see and just answer and reply. That's it. All right, Kalajaye Afiz is a photographer. He said, when you were leaving England for China, did you, and he said he lived two streets away from Salami. Did you ever think of coming back to England, probably to Top Flight League, when you were living in 2017? Of course, if, you, if, if, if they can go through my interview when I was leaving to China and all that, they said, uh, are you coming back? I said, of course, there's possibility of coming back because I know Premier League is the best league in the world. And of course, if I had the opportunity, I'll come. Even when I was in China playing, if you read all my interviews, I always said, I want to finish my career in Europe. If not coming back after China, then maybe in future I'll finish it in Europe, you understand? So when I went to China, I was playing there. I was waiting for the opportunity to come back, you know. But I got some opportunity to come back to Premier League, but that was not what I wanted, you know. But when man, you came knocking, I did not think twice, you know. Now I'm back to Premier League. And I'm doing, some people say, ah, he's old with his age and all that, you know? Age is just a number. I don't, understand how, people, I don't understand how people define age in Africa, Sha. 
Not it's just a number. Like, Everything is here, you, know, you understand? I tell people. Everything is your Where's mentality and how you know? the ordinary can work, you understand? Where's I Latin train Ibrahim every day. I give my best and all. You know, so, you know Where's Latin Ibrahimovic play? You people don't say he's old. You see, an Odion, who doesn't drink alcohol, who doesn't waste his time, who manages himself, is old. I, I don't understand. Well, let me not talk, let me not get angry now, big. Uh, don't get angry, please. Don't get angry. Ahmed Rashid, and I'll not be like you are the quick vessel. Ahmed Rashid, <laughs> say, if they put the decision in your hand right now, and we know that you're my United fan now, you don't want Liverpool to win the title, will you declare the season null and void? Or you will want them to play the season? It's a it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I would like I would like us to finish the season because we too we we are aiming for something for the season. So but it depends on those that is up there, you know. It's a tough one for Liverpool, it's a tough one for everybody, but whatever they decide, I'm okay with it. All right. I cannot take all of the rest, but I'll take from only two more people, Kingsley Dali and uh, Matthias Jacob and Lee. This makes something no best for me. Adele Kingsley asked two questions. He said a local man who followed your dreams and today you play for a club A side. Tell us the short story behind your success. I've always wanted to ask this question. The short story behind because you're very different too. Honestly, let's be honest. You're different. You don't drink, you don't club, you don't smoke, you don't humanize. I've not had scandal about you. Are you normal? Masalami, you grew up. Oh. Like, like, uh, the story? There's not much, you know, because it's discipline. You understand? If you want to go far in your career, you want to achieve so many things in life, you have to discipline yourself. Not because I don't like to enjoy, not because I don't like to drink and all that, but if you see it's not good for you and it's going to, if you're going to short your lifespan or your life span career and all that, you have to stop it, you understand? So, I enjoy myself, not as if I don't enjoy myself, but when I'm working, I know I'm working. When I'm not working, then I know I can do a bit and all that, then go back to the drawing board, you know? It's just the mentality, you know, because sometimes you get carried away when you achieve little things and all that. Like, there's no limit to what humans can achieve, you know? And for me, I believe everything in life is possible. Yeah, me too. If you work hard, you believe in yourself, you work hard, you put effort to everything. Everything in life is possible. I'm living my dreams today. If people tell me three months back you're gonna be playing for Manchester, I won't I won't believe, but I believe I'm gonna achieve more because I work hard and I believe this is who I am so today. It's all and again it's the grace of God, you know. When you put your trust in God, you believe in God, everything works out. I've done so many sacrifices in my life. When people see me today, they say, ah, you wanna be like me, you wanna be like Odion, you wanna be like I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to preach, I'm not a pastor and all that, but I put God first in everything I do. I'm not a perfect man. I'm not a saint. But I put God first in everything I do. I let God lead my path. And I do what I know I can do. I help people. I do that. All those things is open doors, you understand? Yeah. It's open doors. I have an orphanage. I built, I built an orphanage. Before I built my mansion in Lagos, I built an orphanage. You understand? I built an orphanage to take care of the less privileged. I don't even know where they come from. Before I even finish building the orphanage and all that, even start having kids, God opened a bigger door for me to China that even brought more money for me to build my mansion, you understand? So sometimes you have to do some sacrifice some, in certain ways for God to bless you and all that. What I'm enjoying today is God's blessing. It's not how better I am or because I can play better than so many people, you know. It's God's grace upon my life. It's God's blessing I'm enjoying. And still, I work hard for it. I don't give up. I don't give up. I pursue my dream. I work hard. I wake up every morning. I believe it's a new day. It's a new challenge. And I take everything, go out there and give my best. Whether good or bad, I still believe there's a bright future. The second question from Adali Kingsley said, what is your most remarkable dressing room story from the Super Eagles? Most remarkable dressing room story from the Super Eagles? Ah, uh, remarkable dressing rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in last Afghan, uh, in Egypt, Yeah. after first half, we were 2-1 down against Cameroon. Ah, man, that match, I won't die for what I do. Okay. I don't know what gave me, even before that game, I was so confident. 
I was so confident that we're going to win that game, you know. So after 2-1 down, the first half, I see the boys, some of the boys are down. Olai now was not happy because I think he did one mistake. They scored the second goal. I said, hey, guy, apart from this mistake you did, you are playing perfectly well. Don't change the game. Continue like this. We're going to win the game. We enter the dressing room and all that. And I stand up and I said, hey, guys, we're going to win this game. If Cameroon can score two goals in five minutes, we can score two goals in two minutes. Do you guys don't believe the same? I said, we're going to win this game. Do you guys believe me? We are playing better than these people and all that, you know? And I see the boys getting up and daring to go. I was like, this is the kind of spirit I'm, I love, you know? We went back there in that field of play. We played and won that game and we came out and everybody was happy, you know? It's a great moment, you know? Sometimes when the chips are down, you need somebody to push them. You need somebody, even though we didn't win that game, but I can see them I, having that confidence that, oh, we're going to go out here. We are better. We are, I say, yeah, we are better than these people. We, go, we can win there. We are playing better and all that. Stick that confidence in them, you know. Then we went out there. We won that game. <laughs> okay, so uh, there are a few other questions, but I can't touch all of them. But I want to ask you, this is, uh, have you seen this man? Have you seen this man anywhere in Manchester? Which man is that? <laughs> Sir Alex. I call him Sir Daddy. Alex. I've not seen him. I've not seen him. But he's, he's been to the training ground a couple of times. We've been training when he comes and all that. He'll just go straight. I think he has office there. He just go straight to his office and all. Okay. okay. What do you think? What's, what's your opinion of Sir Alex Ferguson? I, I'm not a Man United he's, fan. You know me. I'm an Arsenal he's fan. The greatest, he's the, for me, he's the greatest manager in the world. He's the greatest. That's, that's what I think. There's no... I don't know. I don't care what anybody say. For me, it's the greatest. That's what I think too. Uh, before I let you go, because I'm really taking more than more than the time we agreed on. Uh, Ojo, will you come back to the Super Eagles if <laughs> the, the president of Nigeria this time calls you and say, Ojo, this is the president from the Hosa room. Please come and rescue us. As the president Muhammad, Yo. are you coming back? <laughs> Yo, bro, the Super Eagles is doing very well without me. You know, we have young guys there doing. You see, your see, man, he's, he's firing from left to right, from middle and all that. You know, they're doing very well without me. You understand? Me, I just want to concentrate on my club football for now. But we we'll see, I'm in, in contact with Genetro. We talk almost every, even two days ago. He sent me a message. You know, we talk almost every time. You know. Even before the Super Eagle play play games, I always message him to tell him good luck and all that. You know, he message me after the game, we talk and all that. He always tell me the door is still open for you whenever you are ready to come. I want you to come. I want them to learn a lot from you before you stop. I want I say, coach, the boys are doing well. We'll see in future, you know. But for now, I just want to concentrate on club football. We'll see how that goes in future. Five years from now, ten years from now, you'll be winding up your career. Odion, what are you going to do after football? Have you thought about, have you sat down to think about it? What are you going to do after football? I don't because know, I'm people, telling let, you. Let people don't think about it. And I was reading, uh, I was reading a right book, okay, somewhere there. I was reading a right book, and I realized that one of the reasons players get depressed after the game is that they did not plan what to do after the game. And then you wake yeah. up, you're no longer going for training. And you know, the thing about football is, Almost everything people okay. do for you. Now you are back okay. in the place where you have to start doing everything, book your flight tickets, do everything, and you're confused. Do you have a plan for after football? That's true, you know. Uh, me, I love football. Football, all my life is centered around football. And after I finish, I want to be really involved too in football and all that. I'm, I have an academy in Lagos, in Ekpe, yes. which is uh, yeah, in Ekpe. We're shooting, I, actually, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to tell you this, but we're shooting the documentary on the team. When we're done, you will see the clip. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not telling okay. you. So I have, an, I have an academy in Ekpe, which I'm bringing young guys and young boys and all that. But hopefully, when I finish my career, I will concentrate more on that so that I can be taking the young ones to Europe to go try us, to start their own football career and all that. You know? I want to be involved in football. Maybe either be football agent or have my own academy that can that can nurture players to, to Adel, take Adel, I know I am 42, but I can still play one season. Tell your agent to hook me up with China. 
even if it is 10,000 pounds a week, I'll take it. Just, I don't want to give away. I just want one season in China. <laughs> okay. If we finish this, I mean, I'm going to call him straight away. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, you know, I always say when we have a private chat, I'm not going to decide for you whether to stay in China, even though I wish you go to China because of the money. But you see, the thing is, a man's happiness at this age in life, man, happiness is everything. You're not going to be hungry when you leave playing football. The kind of life you live already mm. tells me you're going to live a good life. So, if Manchester United makes you happy, stay there. If Juventus come, Paris Saint Germain come, Real Madrid, Barcelona, who knows? If they come and that's what makes you happy, my dear, you know I'm always going to be here to be rooting for you, supporting you. It doesn't matter what happens. And if you also say, China is where I'm going to, you've got me supporting you all day. I thank you for making us proud. Uh, uh, in Salami Street, they actually planned a festival for Easter, but because of the lockdown, they're not going to do it again. It was uh, living the dream. Uh, or Joey Gallo living the dream, something something like that. Salami Street, yeah. Didn't happen. Yeah. I went to Ajegule to go and do a documentary, and they stole my two, cam two my, of my camera in, in Ajegule. I will, I will see. <laughs> but, but in that ways, thank you for making us proud. Thank you for adding sure. more followers to Manchester United, because you've actually increased their followers. And thank, thank you, you for showing us that you can be decent, you can be responsible, and still be a great brand and a great footballer. Also, thank you for letting us understand that you can bounce back from a setback, even when the whole world drag you, like what they did in, in, in 2018. I don't want to talk about it, but you can still bounce back and still be a shiny light as long as you keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for your time with us, and God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. God bless you, guys.